Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates and I'm going to be speaking to you today on this video <clears throat> about 10 common shame spirals. These are actually uh, common to me <laughs> uh, but people are people and I think you'll see that uh, some of the things that press my shame buttons probably are pretty common to mankind in general. I want to start by reading a, a little piece that, that for me sort of defines shame. And it was something that I came up with yesterday in a writing class. We were asked to embody a, a trait of, of something and, and one of the women brought up the, the, the subject of shame. So I, I tried to put a physical embodiment to shame and I, I think it captures shame pretty well. So um, pardon me, I am going to read it <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll get into the, the examples about uh, shame spirals. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Shame is an ominous pitch black cloud that relentlessly smothers you wherever you go. This dark cloud makes it absolutely impossible to see things as they really are. It distorts reality into something far, far more negative, cancerous, critical, and hopeless than it is or it ever could be. Shame stealthily sneaks up on vulnerable people with every intention of destroying them. Shame shoves gun barrels into mouths and necks into nooses. Shame is the world's best liar. It can convince a sweet, virtuous woman that she's evil and vile beyond redemption. It can convince a perfectly good and successful man that he's a hapless loser who will never amount to anything. Shame is a plague that haunts almost everyone on the planet to one degree or another. There is nothing redemptive, healing, or life-giving about the deceptive, destructive, soul-murdering, dark energy of shame. So, <clears throat> that's shame. It, it is a really destructive force. And uh, it's being written about uh, more and more in our society. So let me, let me give you ten uh, ways that shame shows itself with me. And like I said, you'll probably hear some things that sound familiar. Uh, the first thing is, uh, when I feel shamed, I, I turn beet red. And sometimes I'll break out into a sweat. So shame affects you physiologically. It's usually if I've been the made uh, the butt of a joke, or <clears throat> if I've done something uh, particularly not very intelligent. Uh, you know, uh, walk into a room with my uh, fly unzipped. Uh, you know, walk out of a bathroom with the toilet paper, uh, you know, attached to your foot or something. I mean, silly things, but uh, I, it's more than embarrassment. And and then everybody knows that I'm feeling shame because it's so physiological. Another area that that it's sort of odd that 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 feels shaming is. Occasionally in a social setting, uh, there'll be a fella, and, and he usually has a full head of hair. He'll he'll look at me with sort of a condescending smile, and then sort of empathizes with the poor bald guy. And and I feel a, a little wave of shame about that. But the truth is, I like being bald. It's low maintenance. I like it. I don't 
really have any bad self-esteem. People assume if you're bald that, that you feel bad about it. I don't. It's cool with me, you know. But when when somebody makes that comment, it's like it's like they're projecting shame onto you and you can still feel it even if it's not true. That's that's sort of the power of being shamed. So um, another issue that happens, and this does sort of bother me, and body image, as I've been doing research online, is probably the number one area where people struggle and, and have issues around shame. But uh, just this morning, I, I met a friend of mine for breakfast, and he was standing in, in line waiting to be seated, and he, he sort of uh, patted his belly when he saw me, and, and what he was saying was, you've been on a cruise, you're off your diet, and I can see that you put five pounds back on. And he didn't even say a word. <laughs> he just patted his belly. And um, he's a lot like my family members. Uh, they would do that. And and so, yeah, I felt, I felt shamed. Uh, I mean, say hi. Uh, ask me how the cruise was. Uh, then you might reach over and pat my belly and say, "Did you did you put on a few, buddy?" That that would feel better than than just an initial. The first thing that's noticed is, "Hey, you got fatter," <laughs> you know. So that that was a a little bitty uh, shaming incident for me. Here's a good one, and I, I don't know if if other people have experienced this. But occasionally, and and it's not because I, I have like bad credit or anything. Um, uh, occasionally, like in Sam's Club, uh, I can never get a credit card to work. And and there's nothing wrong with the credit cards; they they work everywhere else. But if I get a credit card declined, I am mortified. I want to crawl under the cart and hide. I, I, I have that physiological turning beet red, and I'm assuming that the cashier thinks that I'm some loser, and uh, they don't care. <laughs> you know, they're not, they don't have an investment in judging me, but, but I get hit with a wave of shame that is just overwhelming. And uh, to where I've been known to cut up cards, I've been known to not go back to a particular establishment uh, because I feel so much shame and pain related to that incident. Um, <clears throat> another example for me, and I, I blogged and made a video about divorce shame. Uh, where I live now, uh, on the way to where I work, <coughs> the offices of Family Tree Counseling, uh, my old neighborhood is right in between. And if I have an early client, an 8.30, 9 o'clock client, that's early for me, uh, and traffic is pretty heavy, uh, I can skip a long line at a roundabout by cutting through my old neighborhood. And when I do that, I drive right past the house that I lived in when I was married. It's a beautiful house. Looks a little bit like Tony Soprano's house uh, in the, the show. And by the way, God bless, you know, James uh, Gandolfino. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but missed the show. Loved him. Sorry he passed away. Um, so it was a beautiful house. It had a pool. But I drive by... And, and I, feel sh I feel sad and I feel shame because it reminds me of divorce. And, and divorce, um, I think there's levels of shame. I think I have a, a lot of shame resilience in a lot of areas, to, to use a, uh, a term by Brene Brown. She calls uh, instead of calling it shame recovery, she calls it shame resilience, which I, I maybe like a little better even than shame recovery. 
So I think I have a lot of shame resilience around being divorced, but I do get a little ouchy driving by that big house. So, um, you know, shame and regret are <clears throat> mighty close to each other at times. Because if, if you deeply regret something, it's painful, you're reflective, it stays with you. Um, there's a heaviness to it, um, but it but it is redemptive, and there there is a uh, resolve to be better, do better, be healthier. So I do have some regrets as I look back. I've been a therapist for 27 years in the Indianapolis area, and. There are some cases I look back on that, you know, I could have done a better job on. I, I had a blind spot. Um, I just didn't see something that was there. And um, sometimes I move over into shame about that. I wish I could roll back the hands of time and be wiser and uh, be healthier, be a better professional and... Um, uh, but I, I, I think that if you strive to do good work in your, in your job, in your career, then, uh, you know, there's always the sort of the one that got away. There's always the, the um, you know, the account you didn't close or the, if you're a physician or a surgeon, the, the life you didn't save. And, um, and it, it can haunt you. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, many of you remember the show MASH. Uh, maybe you younger people saw it on reruns, but Hawkeye, in a, one of his most famous scenes, was fighting to keep a man alive. And he said he didn't want to let the bastard win. And someone asked him who he was talking about. He was talking about death. And, uh... With most of my clients, it's not life or death. With some of them, it is. And so, so I do have some shame about, um, you know, where I could have done better. And um, I think that's a common uh, occurrence. And the, the goal is to keep your remorse and always strive to, to do a better job and to serve people better in your work. Uh, but not to shame yourself and not to beat up your beat up on yourself for not being perfect so um, the seventh example I want to give of shame is is in competing with with unsafe people um, we have a, a game in my family that we play called double deck bid euchre it's like euchre on steroids uh, and my family, they tend to be large, charge, grandiose, and trash-talking. And so, if the cards fall your way, you sort of look smart. And uh, But if they don't, uh, then, then there's uh, harsh words and criticism and embarrassment. And, sh and basically what it is is shame. And uh, that's, that's an ingrown in grounded in a uh, facet of my family that I wish that it was okay to lose. I watched a movie last night. Uh, I think it was called uh, Legendary. And it was about a, a, a high school kid who was a, a wrestler. And his brother trained him. And it, it followed the stereotypical, you know, puny kid learns to fight and he has a a Mr. Miyago in the background and then he wins and everybody cries. Except this time he didn't win. He got to the championship. He came this close to winning. And I like I liked it because what they were saying is you don't have to be in first place to be a winner. And it's okay to deal with losing. And in my family uh, we could use a lot more graciousness when it comes to not always winning. 
uh, a classic <clears throat> example of shame is uh, being overly defensive. And for couples, that is where shame really interrupts the communication process. I wrote an article many years ago, and it was a play on John Bradshaw's famous book about shame healing the shame that binds you, and I called it Healing the Shame That Blinds You. And when, when your significant other, when your spouse is projecting their stuff onto you, it may or may not be true. It doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> but if it, if it hits on your shame, then you're going to come, become reactive. You're going to stop listening. You're not going to be empathetic. You're not going to enter into their world. You're going to be combative. It's going, you're throwing a rock back at them. They're going to throw a rock back at you. What I've learned in uh, my uh, significant other, Betsy, and I were involved in Imago therapy together. And what I've learned is you don't have to get defensive. You don't have to uh, set the record straight. Uh, just know that that's how your partner feels and, and empathize with them. And, and what you'll get is communication that's a hundred times better by not uh, having that big shame button right in the middle of your head where your spouse can whack it. Uh, you just hear them out, and, you, and we actually are trained to uh, sort of parrot back to them. Uh, so, honey, what I hear you saying is that you don't like it when I... Uh, spend too much money on my kids because it feels like I'm not taking care of you. Do I have that correctly? Is there more? So I don't have to get defensive. And that's a, that's a wonderful gift and it will reduce the amount of conflict in your marriage tremendously. Um, the other two are related to duty. Um, a couple of years ago, I was big into P90X, and I have every intention of getting back into it. I just haven't, and uh, I feel some shame. I think there's a lot of uh, exercise shame in the world. And again, it, it goes back to what's the difference between remorse and shame. You know, remorse and guilt is tapping you on the shoulder and saying, you know, that, that would be good for you. But shame says, you know, you're a, a big old fatty and, you know, you're probably going to have a heart attack and, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're not very good because you're not doing your P90X. Um, and the other thing that uh, brings up shame for me is uh, I, have a, I have a writing uh, office that I'm in right now. This is my, I call it world headquarters for relationship jazz um, uh, but it's my writing office but I have a business office for just running the home and when it gets covered over with papers then yeah I, I start to feel a lot of shame and sometimes it haunts me in my sleep because uh, and my chest tightens up because I'm behind and I'm pressured then to clean that up and and again some of that is is guilt that says you know you better you better make sure those bills get paid young man but uh some of it is is a darker more critical more scary ominous thing and that's that's what i was trying to get at uh in the earlier reading that i did that uh shame is it makes the world dark it makes it ominous it makes it more scary than it really is so those are 10 common shame spirals uh, that I experience, but I think a lot of people experience around duty, around defensiveness, around body image, around divorce, around uh, making mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes in life, and it's okay to make mistakes and to lose every once in a while. So. I want to encourage you to sign up 
uh, to subscribe for our YouTube channel, Family Tree Counseling. Visit our website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com. I have five books there that are available for sale, including a book on abandonment called Managing Abandonment Issues Through Recovery. And I have my Shane book uh, coming out in September. I'm a little behind. I've had a lot going on this summer with my kids and travel, and I'm a little behind, so I hope I get it done by September. I'm not going to shame myself if it's October, but we'll see how that goes. So thank you for watching the video, and God bless.